Hey, Emma, how's it going? Uh, good, thank you. Good. Thank you for inviting me. How awesome. are you doing? Pretty good. It's too hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Can't you're you're disagree. you're in Spain, right? I am. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm living in Spain now. I'm living in Barcelona and it's nice. meant to be like the the coolest temperature wise in Spain right now apart from, you know, northern Spain, um where it's usually quite cool compared to the rest of Spain mm -hmm. but I'm still dying I'm definitely not used to this heat I'm very what much kind, used to the English what kind of temperatures weather. are you getting it varies like yesterday morning um it had been thundering all night mm. so I woke up and it was a very cool 23 degrees and I woke up feeling Perfect. you know quite chilly actually nice. and usually you know 23 degrees would be like my perfect temperature but no because it's been like 30 35 degrees these past few months <laughs> not even weeks but months i actually felt quite cold when it was 23 degrees so i I'm, just wasn't used to that i'm guessing it didn't last long this 23 um, degree by 12 p.m <laughs> it was back to 30 again ugh, ugh, yeah, yeah yeah it's kind of the same here I'm, I'm in bulgaria but i'm in the hottest city in bulgaria so oh. it's like it's yeah we're we're reaching 40 on some days. It's, it's kind of crazy. Oh, no. Yeah, it's too much. That's oh, horrible. Too much, too much. Is it humid as well? A little, yeah. But yeah. I used to live in Istanbul and that was way worse because the humidity there is, is yeah. intense. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember going to Brazil. I went to Rio de Janeiro. Mm. Sounds really weird saying that like an English, <laughs> like an English accent, but right. <laughs> I went there. Um, and I was only there for about a week and a half or mm -hmm. two weeks or something. And it was absolutely unbearable. And it was winter. It was in February. Oh, whoa. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the Southern Hemisphere though, right? So it's summer. Yeah. No, it was meant to be like cooler. Okay. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. Sure. Someone correct correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was meant to be like the coolest time of the year in February. Okay. Yeah. This could also be microclimatic <laughs> issues as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. But was it the humidity that was the problem? It was, yeah. I, I remember we went through this kind of urban jungle sort of area. Um, we were going up, uh, what's it called? The Sugarloaf Mountain. We were going up there. Oh, that's in there. Is and, it? I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you you can take this kind of uh, I can't remember the name of what it what it's called, like a kind of cable car. Cable car thing. I call them cable yeah, cars. Yeah. yeah, people have different words for this, right? Some people. Yeah, and oh, I always get confused which one words? to use. Yeah. But tell tell us something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, ca I feel cable car is really American. Cable car. But that's I what I use car. as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cable car. maybe it's fine. Oh, but... Telerific or something like that, right? It's, it, it's something like Tele. No doubt, people are yeah. listening to this and they're just like screaming <laughs> at us, like you idiots. <laughs> yeah, but don't you know, know it, your own it language. Is... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm worried English teacher is even mm. worse. Um, but yeah, you you can take that. Up, yep. uh, up, up to Sugarloaf Mountain, cool. or you can go through this kind of urban jungle. Mm. Now, I have asthma, so mm -hmm. um, there are certain things that trigger my asthma. Like throughout the day, I'm absolutely fine. I don't have asthma attacks or anything like that from you know walking to the shop, like I know some people do. Mm -hmm. um, but things that trigger my asthma are swimming, mm. uh, running, and not pacing myself properly. Mm -hmm. um, and high humidity okay. so when it's incredibly humid I, I like walking to the bathroom it's like running a marathon for me <laughs> it's really bad and I remember we had to take these steps up and uh I was just sweating like my dress was mm -hmm. just absolutely soaked mm -hmm. it was everything mm -hmm. I sweat in places I never I never knew my legs could sweat <laughs> like legs. really like the backs of my knees mm -hmm. yeah the sweatiest legs in Brazil <laughs> and um <laughs> we were walking up so because of the humidity it was super hot mm -hmm. um so I was sweating like mad so that made me really uncomfortable and then yeah on on top of that the humidity was affecting my asthma so I was literally walking up maybe four or five steps and I had to stop. I was literally like, <gasps> and my boyfriend Whoa. said to me, God, you're so unfit. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, but are you dumb? It is like 90% humidity. We're practically underwater here. Like it's terrible. <laughs> my God. Yeah, it, I'd never felt humidity like it. So and then um, 
we went to Uruguay straight after. It's such mm-hmm. a dry heat there okay. uh, compared to it. So yeah, it was amazing going there straight after From that. One it to was the other. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Rio de Janeiro is very humid. That's good to know for yeah. anyone who's planning to go there. Yeah. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Istanbul and Rio. Okay, those are the ones. Um, and you're in Barcelona. Cool. Okay. Yes. I have a weird thing that, um, you know, everyone has like a YouTube niche, right? The algorithm finds something that they didn't realize they loved. And it turns out my YouTube niche is, um, uh, you know, this like geo guesser game, right? Where uh, yeah. yeah, you're dropped in somewhere and you have to guess where it is. But I watch other people play it. Um, <laughs> right, okay. And there's like, yeah, there's one that's um, based on aerial views. You get you get like a sort of every aerial view of a city and you have to figure out what city is. Great. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Barcelona looks amazing from above um, because of these buildings. You, you have these these kind of squ- like uh, courtyards in the middle of these blocks, right? Yeah. And there's a yeah, whole yeah, yeah. swath of the city that has these like really cool like so they're, they're they're buildings, but there's a big sort of communal area in the middle. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like a kind of courtyard, isn't mm, it? But massive, yeah. right? For big yeah. apartment blocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. I haven't seen yeah. any city that kind of has anything <laughs> quite like that. So when I think of Barcelona, I think of these really nice sort of big apartment blocks with these courtyards. With yeah. the courtyards. It's funny that you mentioned that. You just triggered a memory. Mm-hmm. Where was I? I'm pretty sure I was in Copenhagen. And um, my boyfriend and I were just walking down the street randomly. Mm. And all of a sudden, this woman stopped us. Just Random, we were the only people on this street. It was in this little kind of urban, well, urban area, it's a city. Ugh. I mean, like a kind of residential area is what I'm thinking. So there's no one around, no tourists or anything. And this woman comes up and she's like, oh, do you want to see something? And I'm thinking, oh God, here we go. You know, she's going to try and like take us away, harvest our organs or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, you know, the old organ harvesting that happens yeah, when you go traveling. Especially in Denmark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, it's quite crazy over there. It's the organ harvesting. Um, so <laughs> for anyone listening, it's really not. I've realized in the past when I make these jokes about countries, I think of people messaging me like, we don't do that in my country. I'm yes. like, I know. It's it was a, a joke. Irony. Okay. Irony. Um, yeah, Denmark, one of the safest countries in the world, probably, I'd imagine. I, I think, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Wasn't it voted like one of the happiest? Or... Mm-hmm. I think I, it, it, it hits it those of sorts the... of lists, doesn't yeah. it? Like happiest, safest, all those yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, this woman just came up to me. She's like, oh, do you want to see something? And we're like, mm, okay, why not? Okay. <laughs> she's like, oh, let, let me show you something really cool. And uh, she's like, oh, th- this is where I live. And this is where the organ harvesting was coming in. I was thinking, <laughs> oh, God, she's going to invite us into her house, you know. Um, and she opened the door and she's like, oh, um, and she was just randomly telling us about these courtyards. Um, like she kind of opened this big door. Mm-hmm. We went through very stupid of us but anyway Mm. we were young and dumb um and went into this courtyard and she's explaining to us you know this story like the history like oh um did you know that these courtyards were used for i think they were used for stables or something like that she's like oh these are some old stables and that's why they're this shape and blah 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 blah. and i thought wow that's so cool Uh, she's like Oh, I just thought I'd share that with you. Enjoy your day. So that's so she cool. So like, a st- <laughs> <laughs> she kicked you out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, all stories have to end, I suppose. Um, yeah. <laughs> but wow, that's so cool. So, so just complete stranger in the street saw you were a tourist and went, "Come look at my house. It's really cool." Yeah, literally. That's yeah, amazing. yeah. Just walking down the street. I don't, I don't remember where we were within Copenhagen, but mm. we just, we were just wandering around. And just came up to us, just like, do you want to say something? I think she'd been like shopping or something. If, if I remember rightly, she was like carrying something. She was just okay. on her way home. Just on her way home. And then saw us. But, <laughs> hey, um, you, come here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect victims. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Yes. But, yeah, in, in my experience, Danish people are like some of the kindest people I've mm-hmm. ever met. One of my closest friends is Danish and um, yeah, they're, they're the kindest people. And when I go, people... It's weird because people think I'm Danish, so they speak Danish to me, and I'm just like, what? Mm, <laughs> and they're okay. like, oh, I'm so sorry. Break out into this amazing English. Um, so, they, yeah, yeah, they have very good English in Denmark too, right? Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, what... You could go to the tiniest town and 
I think that explains why in all my years teaching, I don't think I've ever had a single Danish student because they don't need, or Dutch, come to that. No, no, that that's mm-hmm. true. I've never had a Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish student either. I've had Norwegian and Swedish, but very rare. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, mm. yes. Uh, oh, actually, no, there. no, think about it. Mm-hmm. I'm lying. I have had a Swedish student, mm-hmm. but it was many, many years ago. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, in a language school. Yeah, she's the only one. <laughs> Just one though, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so few and, few and far between, to use yeah. a, a fun idiom. Is it an idiom? Yeah. It's a phrase. Uh yeah, cool. Um, nice. Anyway, so yeah, where were we? Barcelona, houses, Denmark. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and oh, yeah. Okay, so you normally uh, with with podcast interviews, you have the beginning of the interview, just like, oh, tell us about yourself and your background, right? And you get all that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I never, you know, when I'm listening to a, a, a podcast, especially if it's for the first time, I'm, I'm not interested in the interviewee yet, right? I, haven't, I have mm-hmm. no investment in, in the interview. Yep. So I thought it'd be kind of cool just to get started on what we're going to talk about. And then we can have a you break, uh, which is like, okay. once we've all got to know you a bit more, then we can, I can ask you about your background, who you are <laughs> and things like that. I thought you were going to flip it around and say, so instead of me asking you questions, <laughs> you're going to ask me questions. <laughs> oh my God, this you're going to interview me. It's starting yeah. to feel like a lesson now because I do yeah. that all the time in my lessons. Um, no, no, but we'll we'll, we'll have a, an Emma break in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Sound good? Works yeah, yeah, sounds good. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, today uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about swearing, which is, is, which is fucking good. I think that's the first time I've yep. sworn on the podcast. But obviously <gasps> today is an exceptional episode because we're just going to fucking swear. Oh, God, that feels good. That feels good. <laughs> just um, let it all out. Yeah, let yeah, it all out. indeed. <laughs> So I, I was listening to your podcast and yeah, I think like one episode I really enjoyed was, it was like what, four or five episodes back, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you did a really cool one on, um, on, on swearing and phrases with swearing. Can, remind, remind me of some of the phrases that came out and what, what are your favorite from that, from that episode? Oh my goodness, I don't really remember good what I did yesterday, never mind yeah, yeah. what was in the episode. But um, I think I talked about different idioms, yeah. if I remember That's rightly, right. like different idioms and expressions with swearing. You had some um, really useful ones in there, like, like you know, they fucked me over, for example, yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah. God, I, I can't remember what, what I said, but I, I do have a favourite one, and it's... Mm-hmm. Um, shit hit the fan. Oh, yes. Because yes. if you actually sit and think about it mm-hmm. shit <laughs> hitting the fan <laughs> is is a real messy thing which perfectly describes what happens when you know you use the idiom and mm. shit hits the fan mm-hmm. um yeah for yeah. anyone who doesn't know about the idiom i mm-hmm. don't know if you want to explain yeah, go, it you go ahead nice oh okay so if shit hits the fan it tends to be when ooh when uh, a situation kind of becomes um may- maybe i could put it in like an actual situation okay. like um when i was younger <laughs> I, I i have got two brothers right so we would maybe do something like break something or whatever and my mom would say something uh, my mom we're we're a yorkshire family okay from yorkshire swearing is our native language right uh, and my mom would say something like, wait until your dad gets home. Shit's going to hit the fan. Nice. Uh, and I used to shit my pants. You know, that's another good expression. <laughs> I used to shit my pants, thinking like, oh my God, you know. And then... My, my then dad's going to go mental. You're, you're, so, you're in deep shit. You're in deep shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're in deep shit. There seems um, to be a relationship with shit and trouble, isn't there? Like this yeah. the metaphor, shit is trouble. Shit equals yeah. trouble. Yeah, yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. It either equals something rubbish or something mm-hmm. like trouble. You're yeah. right, or a problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, interesting. So, I, I hadn't thought about this before. Sorry for interrupting. Hold that thought. No, but no, no. <laughs> since you mentioned that, it, it mentioned it. Yeah, like it's shit, meaning something's terrible. But then you've got this yeah. thing with it's the shit. Yeah. And it's the shit means like it's fantastic. It's the best. Exactly. If I say your podcast is the shit, it means it's the best podcast. But if I say your podcast shit, it means it's the worst. It, it's weird, mm. you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But 
I have some students also saying like, oh, it's a shit. And I have to explain to them, no, that means like an actual shit. Yeah, that's <laughs> like not actual... metaphorical. <laughs> yeah, that's a real one. That's so, so weird, um, yeah. Yeah, it is. I remember when I was doing my degree, oh God, like 10 years ago, back in Spain as well, because I used to live in Spain oh, right, 10 cool. years ago. Uh-huh. And um, I did a, a year abroad in Spain. And one of the modules was just like an extra module I used to go to. So I wasn't part of my degree if that makes sense it's mm-hmm. just something i went to was like an extra mm-hmm. i only went to a few lessons because i wasn't a big fan of the tutor he was a bit arrogant um C- can, I, can we, can we use a swear word for him can we practice some swearing with this tutor or maybe you don't want to go that far <laughs> no i was a bit of a dickhead Dickhead's to be honest fine, yeah. really was. um just quite egotistic and he would make some really um stereotypical remarks about english people that mm. just you know it's fine if it's done like once or twice, mm-hmm. you know, as, you know. Yeah, it could be, it could be fun but... and, and bonding even, you know, taking the piss, yeah. taking the piss, taking the piss taking out, the of, piss. out yeah. of each other. Yeah, but he, yeah, so, yeah. sorry, you say he did it all the time. Huh? Yeah, no, uh-huh. he, he did it quite a lot. And it was, and it was just like, the, it, it got to the point where it wasn't even just funny comments. It sounded like he was making digs, mm-hmm. oh, which is another good expression. To make digs That's at someone one. is where you're trying to like, insult them a little bit but just in a little way that's maybe not uh, in a very subtle way almost Mm -hmm. um so i remember one time i i had a lecture and um and i i went straight to his office because i had a a meeting with him and he couldn't do any other time so i had to do it like straight after this this lecture Mm -hmm. so yeah i rushed over and i was kind of sweating i mean i sweat all the time anyway so (laughs) even when you're not in rio yeah yeah literally like even in winter I, mm. I just sweat all the time um and uh i got there and i was like oh god sorry i'm you know i'm like sweating oh, I'm, I'm so sorry but you know i'm here and you know let's talk about this whatever and uh and then he made a comment it was something along the lines of like oh did you eat here as uh, did you eat on your way here as well mm, that's an like, odd that- thing to say yeah exactly i was mm. like what what do you mean by that thinking is it trying to insinuate something else about me like what's he trying to say he's like oh because you british people you never stop you're always just eating as you're walking i'm like what where the where the fuck did that come from you know that's a good of, expression of well. all the stereotypes about the british he chose that one that isn't even a stereotype really is it i've never heard i know that like in the US, people are known to mm-hmm. always get like coffees on the go, like a, a coffee and a bagel, and they're always eating on the go. Like that is a stereotype in the US. But I think this guy, I should also mention he was Australian. <laughs> oh, he wasn't um, Spanish? No, no, no. He was Australian. And okay. yeah, I was quite surprised. That's, uh, that's very You know, some, some of the stupid things he used to say. He clearly didn't have much experience with British people because it confused <laughs> many of the stereotypes with the with the people from the US. But anyway, mm. back to this guy, what was I saying? Yes, so in one of his lessons, um, I don't remember the name of the module, but it was something along the lines of like, world Englishes. So Lovely. it was talking about different I did that Englishes. at university, yeah. Yeah, it's super, super interesting. You, mm-hmm. you get to learn about not just British English, American English, you learn about uh, Indian English, uh, Singlish, you know, from Singapore, you learn about Chinglish from China, and you know, all of these different mm-hmm. types of English. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so interesting. And then one lesson, we, we ended up getting onto the topic of swear words, and we were comparing swear words in English to Spanish. And, um, you know, in English, our, our insults are very like shit based. They're very um, genitalia based, right? So yeah. uh, if I want to say like, uh, maybe I don't like you, I want you to go away. I'll say, oh, fuck you. Yeah, it's like, very like sex based mm-hmm. in English. In Spanish, it's quite similar, but they do lean towards shitting on things more in Spanish. <laughs> so like my favorite in- expression in Spanish is me cago en la leche. It's like I shit in the milk. And it's, it, <laughs> oh in my English, god, that's I, so vivid! Oh my god! Yeah, I, they just love. I mean, they meet, like the language, yeah. those Spanish people. Um, but they they love shitting on things in the language. Another one is um, <laughs> a, again a very strong one. Me cago en la puta, like I shit on the whore. 
um, <laughs> when you really want to insult someone in Spanish, wow. uh, they, this is very strong. That's they say, pretty the cago brutal. des muertos. Yeah, yeah it's like oh I shit god. on your dead. On the it's dead. Like, oh my god. Yeah. It's shitting everywhere. They, they shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the I mean, language. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe they shit everywhere. They can tell us in the comments, but um, it it is very shit based. This Spanish. That's and, interesting. And it's, yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. watching. Um, it was a Michael Palin documentary. I was w- watching a whole bunch of Michael Palin documentary. For those who don't know, That's Michael different. Palin is one of the Mon- one of the Pythons, Monty Python, big uh, sitcom in Britain. Uh, but he ended up becoming like the most liked man in Britain. Um, doing lots of travel documentaries mostly. But yeah, he was looking at, I think it was Michael Payne, and he was looking at some swearing in around the world. The, I didn't do this for my research. I'm just remembering this now, though. Um, hmm. And yeah, he was uh, he, he was checking out some sort of random tribes in Africa, for example, and, and asking them how they swear. And kind of he, his, his point was from this not very academic research that he did for this documentary <laughs> was that, yeah, I mean, ma- most, most swearing does just generally focus around uh, defecation. So it's like shitting and pissing and, um, yeah. and, and sex, which is like fucking. And um, yeah, and, and it, it goes all the way across cultures that people just uh, have that. But it's interesting yeah. that you're saying that, like, I guess some people favor one over the other. <laughs> In different mm. in different languages, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. I think I get the impression that English is more genitalia based, mm. um, and like even our strongest swear words in English, um, if people don't mind me using them, You're going like, for the c cunt, word. Yeah, I'm going okay. for it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I actually use it quite quite a bit, but mm. I know some people when someone's really acting like one, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, um, for it's a special occasion I'm... one. You know, you save it for like it's... <laughs> real bastards, <laughs> for, like for the top tier dickheads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've got like this nice kind of um, like a different level system, haven't you? You've mm. got like. You know, an asshole, a wanker, a dickhead, tithead. I like that Ooh, one. Oh, that's well. good. I never use that one. Is yeah. that that? Is that maybe that's a bit more regional? That one. I don't. Don't, or maybe don't not. you use that one? Yeah. I, I never use I, that. I don't but know. Could be regional. Could be generational as well. You know, maybe maybe it's it's a newer one. I like it though. I, d- I don't know. My mom used to always use tithead. Ah. I'm sure. But, um, so. Yeah. I don't know if it's just a northern thing. We but should check yeah, the I research do... on Tithead somewhere. Someone's studied <laughs> this somewhere. <laughs> they must. <laughs> yeah, the popularity of the use of the term Tithead. That's a good one. Um, but that's still yeah, quite soft, it is. isn't it? You're still in the soft area here, right? I mean, I wouldn't call the child. I wouldn't call a child a Tithead, mm-hmm. right? But like, if I'm in the in the street and someone I don't know is being a Tithead, you know, I'll call them a Tithead. Nice. Um, but it, it is also funny to imagine someone with a head like a tit, you know, like when you actually <laughs> yes. think about these insults. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. And I guess comic comic swearing is quite effective because it's not just like you're, you're insulting someone, but you've also, they can't really fight back because you've made no. everyone laugh. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. it's an extra line of defense or an le- extra line of attack, I suppose. Yeah, it's true. It's like when I that. use wanker with, with non-Brits. Mm-hmm. They, they find it quite funny because oh, it's so British. It's so British. So they, they, they're they too busy going, oh, that's quaint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so British. Oh, you're so wanker. I'm like really angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's quite good. So, okay, so that's your, like, your low-level category. I got the mm. feeling you were about to graduate to, a, to another level there. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I was going to go up to, um, I'm trying to think what would be the next level after, after, like, tithead, dickhead, wanker. There must be mid, a sort mid- of mid-level, right? All, all I can think of is, like, fucker, oh, you, oh, mm. you something fuck, like, you, got, like you dumb d- fuck. Yeah, dumb or... fuck, mother, motherfucker, yeah. dickhead, you know, this is sort of the mm. pretty strong, but yeah. not top tier yet. No, like bastard, yeah. I would say is a, a bit stronger than than you know arsehole, <laughs> but yeah, top tier. I, I would definitely put cunt as, as top tier. And, I think and yeah, top tier. I think has like it's reserved for like two or three. Really, there's not not much can reach that top tier. No. It's like a pyramid, isn't it? No, no. I'm trying to think of what could you know sit alongside 
the the see you next tuesday word um Ooh, see you next tuesday nice see you next tuesday yeah um i don't know what what would kind of sit next to that yeah. in terms of insults it's right at the um, top isn't it it really is but, but it's it's so weird why i don't know why i guess you need i i guess it's if it if there were more that on that level it wouldn't be so special it, it would have to share right. the power i think there's one more <laughs> word that that uh that goes beyond it and um it's not really a swear word, but it, it, we're, we're going out of swearing and into like, um, like offending people genuinely. And I, I'm not going to use it because it's just so strong. And it's, um, but I, I want to talk about, oh God, I'm going to get his name wrong, aren't I? Give me a second. <laughs> From Manchester poet, 1970s. Tall, skinny guy. Oh my God. I've Evidently no Chicken Town. Chicken Town. Evidently Chicken Town. I'm going to Google. Sorry about this. I should have researched this. <laughs> Evidently Chicken Town, and his name is John Cooper Clark. You know this guy? I would, yeah, I would oh. never have got that. No, no, no. Okay, well, he had one poem which is really fantastic called uh, "Some Cunt Said the N Word." <gasps> ah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. the the N word. The N word. Yeah, I can't even bring myself no, to, I, I'm not gonna, to I, say it. I just just, just because I yeah. simply because I know that people will clip it. And, you know, put it online and be like, oh, she, she said, said it, this. she said yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at, at the very least for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. With a controversialist in the chair and a woman who's been known to swear, they really try to not care when some come use the N word. Rolling news don't ever sleep. I saw this terrorist weep. What could have got to that creep? Some can't use the N word. Motherfucker called some other fucker. All kinds of cocksucker. Everything was pucker. Then some can't use the N word. <laughs> A prominent politician deemed an unrepentant sex fiend. That footage never got screened. Some can't use the N word. I tried to warn you fervently of a matter of some urgency. I can't remember the emergency because some can't use the N word. Some some knuckle dragging provincial bore. You know, one of the undeserving poor. Well, shut the front door. Some can't use the N word. The heated debate done got too hot. Any rational argument went to pop look like you know what some can't use the n-word you better pray you better pray nature never gets its way i'll tell you why but not today some can't use the n-word costumes by mr tough cocktails by molotov Coffee. yeah john cooper clark some some cunt said the n-word i just love that because it, it completely encapsulates um the replacement of one top tier word with another do you know what I mean? He's, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, he's okay to say cunt, but he won't say the N-word. Um, right, and I, okay. It, linguistically, I think it's quite a statement. I think it's a strong, interesting observation of how, how things have changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. no for, for sure. I mean, people do use the N-word, um, especially in like music a lot of the time. I've, I've noticed it used in music, e even by white people. Mm. And I, I'm not sure how they get away with it. I'm sure, but mm -hmm. there's, um, you know, quite a lot of people who are offended by it. But yeah, yeah, people hear it in music and things like that. Don't feel that they can then use it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that does happen sometimes. You know, I've had students who listen to a lot of hip hop and they throw the word around a lot and yeah. they're pretty damn white. And it's like, I would be careful if I were you, mate. <laughs> like, yeah, to, to just yeah. use that word all the time. It's it's you, you've got to know what know you're doing strength. if you want to yeah. use that. Yeah, yeah. They don't know the strength of them. This is something that I I kind of struggle with a little bit in in other languages when I'm first learning other languages. Mm. Is mm -hmm. the degree of, of swear words? You know, um, I once uh, had a student use the N word in class. I mean, he was actually quite racist and I did end up having to stop classes with him because he was a uh, first he was, class tithead. He really so was. So he was, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he, was, he was doing the wrong thing for the wrong reason rather yeah. than the wrong thing for the right reason or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I kept saying to him, like, you, you can't use that word. It's, it's really strong. And he's like, oh, it's really strong. Oh, great. I'll carry on using it. Like, he actually took it the other way normally people mm. you would say like mm -hmm. oh don't don't use the word cunt because it's quite strong like 
for some of my Spanish students, the word uh, coño is used in Spanish a lot mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. not strong at all. Okay. Um, so when they discover the word cunt, which it sounds and looks quite similar, they, they sometimes use it quite uh, a bit. Uh, cool. And I have to say like, whoa, 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 like it's quite strong in, in English. Uh, and they're just throwing it around like the word damn. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, it's so yeah, it's, a, it's a different place on the pyramid. It is. Yeah. Yeah, the swe- yeah. The sweary pyramid. The sweary pyramid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but then they realize and then they're like, oh, okay, what what can I say in- instead of that? And I'll tell them, oh, say, well, you say, titties. Yeah, you titties. <laughs> 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 I do, I do, I do like that word. Yeah, that's a good. Good. I'm taking that. I'm, I'm going to start incorporating that into my vocabulary now. That's, that's yeah. my take. My takeaway from the podcast interview. <laughs> Your tit-head. homework. Yeah, write yeah. ten different phrases with the word "tithead." <laughs> Use "tithead" in real life three times yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I shall. I shall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. I, I like that. That's a really good point you raised as well. Like um, knowing how sensitive swear words are because you know we can learn words and we can even you know translate them into our own language but that's not enough with swear words right because perfect observation with this the the c word in spanish and in english completely different right um yeah yeah, i know i found that because my 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 first second language is um turkish and um swearing in turkish is like really really like you're that's fighting talk if you're swearing or you're really close. You can't, like, I know in England, you can, you know, if someone's being a dickhead in the street, you can just say, oh, fuck off, and mm. it's fine. You do that in Turkey, you're like, yeah, that's, you, you have to take it to the next level. That's the rules. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah, so I, I discovered that quite quickly. <laughs> you can't just swear <laughs> in Turkish whenever you like. After Not your like third in English. fight, you just, yeah. uh, <laughs> you learn your yeah. lesson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned the hard way. Um, yeah. So I think that's an interesting point, right? Like different different types of swearing and even swearing itself have different um, sort of levels of sensitivity. Yeah. In different, and different languages, different cultures. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And mm-hmm. some interesting things as well. I know in some cultures, even, you know, within, within the UK, particularly within older generations, they equate swearing to laziness or mm. that you're uneducated. So mm-hmm. they think, oh, well, if you're swearing all the time, then it's because you're not smart enough to think of another word, um, which I disagree with. I think swearing has its, has its place for sure. Yeah. I do think though that they are right to some degree. Like I used to know one girl who swore all the time. Like she literally could not say a sentence without the word fucking in it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, I went to the fucking shop yesterday. And, oh, fucking hell. I bought this fucking chocolate bar. I had no fucking money on me. I didn't have enough to fucking pay. And it was like that. And it was actually quite embarrassing being around her because she would... Because it was too know, much, it... right? Yeah, yeah. The, mm. There is a, a limit. I think there's, I think it's a skill. I think there's a skill to this. An art. An yeah. art to it. And that does, I, I, I did actually get a couple of clips, video clips for this um, interview. So I, right. I want to, yeah, I think you're right because overdoing it is like, um, yeah, kind of almost embarrassing, right? And yeah. may, maybe that is lazy, but that doesn't mean that swearing itself is lazy. In fact, good swearing is difficult right mm. and um have you have you ever watched the thick of it it's a british sitcom political uh, it's a political it's behind the scenes in the in the minister's office it um, rings a bell okay. maybe if i see a clip of it i'm I might you realize, are about I, I might to see a clip it. of it okay right. so i'm gonna I, I guess sharing the screen might be the best way to do this uh okay okay let's see if i, I got it give me a sec uh okay. you're my the inevitable alt tabbing marathon too many <laughs> too many things open why is that open um it's okay i'll talk i'll entertain people it's, <laughs> it's all right i could just i could just edit it all out um yeah. or keep it in for authenticity um okay here I we go i keep it in i keep yeah. in all the chaos yeah yeah it's nice i think it it makes things a bit more real ho- homey <laughs> yeah, homey yeah. is one word. it's another word for shit isn't it <laughs> yeah it's another word for amateur and shit <laughs> Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> no, amateur. I like to keep things amateur and shit. Um, it's my style. <laughs> and in the spirit of that, um, we're going to watch some awesome swearing. I hope this works. Let me know if you can't hear it when I start right. playing it. So I'm sharing okay. the screen now. You got it? Yep. Okay. Full screen. It's only 26 seconds. Off we go. Let me know if you can't hear it. All right, here we go. 
Nope, I can't hear it. Oh, classic. Uh, <laughs> you need okay. to share the audio. You know what I can do? Oh, can do, oh, is sharing audio a thing as well? You, you've got to share the audio as Ooh, well. Oh, so. you're such you're a pro. But Excellent. I, How do I do that? And, <laughs> so when you go to share screen and yeah. then you choose the window you want to share, in yeah. the bottom left hand corner it says uh, share audio. There's a little button, and you need to click that when you share. Nice. Like I said, amateur and shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Share sound. It's the, Here it is. It's you got it. You got it. It's a vibe, <laughs> okay. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. This is my 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 what's the word? USP. Um, yeah. That's it, right? Unique selling point. USP. Yeah, yeah. I was, I yeah, was yeah. thinking of UPS. I'm like, why are you mentioning the delivery company? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's my other job. All right, are you ready? You ready for it? <laughs> yeah, Some yeah, qu- yeah. Quality well, swearing. Ready. Here we go. Oh, How do we respond to this? Right, we don't we don't exchange insults with bloody Simon arse pipes titty twat. That's honestly, the best swearing that you can come up with. Ooh. This is a bucket of shit. If someone throws shit at us, we throw shit back at them. We start a shit fight. We throw so much shit back at them that they can't pick up shit, they can't throw shit, they can't do shit. Hmm. That's top swearing, yeah. Glenn. Well done. There Watch we go. Line. Top yeah. swearing. <laughs> it's top swearing. Um, so. That's hard. It's hard to swear, swear that well, right? It It is, yeah. And um, the the way he... I mean, it's all scripted. I think if anyone had to do this in real life, I don't think it would be anywhere near as good. It's definitely quiet, requires mm-hmm. thought, mm-hmm. doesn't it, with the script writers and stuff. But um, it's interesting that he uses these metaphors, but he also incorporates like some... Uh, there was like an idiom in there as well. Oh, I can't remember what it was, but he, he said something called start some shit or like th- there was something in there. Um, yeah, yeah. They can't do shit. I see. But maybe it was that one. Yeah, because yeah. there, there was an expression in there and I was like, oh, that's actually quite clever because to do shit is like, if you can't do shit, it means you can't do anything. Yeah. Um, which is actually quite cleverly written because it's like, you're still using that word shit in each yeah. of them to mean, but it's, yeah, they can't do anything. Yeah, it's kind of more metaphorical than the others, right? Because it's more abstract. Because the other yeah, ones yeah. are quite visual, like a bucket of shit, throw shit, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get a strong image in your head. But um, do shit suddenly is like clean and direct and sharp and n- not so messy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, di- it's difficult. It's difficult to swear that well. So I, I, I agree with you. I think it's if people say that, um, like, uh, swearing is lazy, then show them that. I will. I yeah, will do. Yeah. I, I think as well, swearing definitely has its place mm-hmm. within uh, society. I remember many years ago, I was trying to think about which documentary I... I watched about this. I'm pretty sure it was a documentary from about, uh, oh, got tongue tied, from about 10 years ago mm-hmm. called Planet Word by a guy called Stephen Fry. Now, I'm sure you're aware of Stephen Fry. Many people might not be, but he's a, a national treasure in, in the UK. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, he's very famous. He's known as being, you know, very intelligent. He's on these like, uh, quiz shows and things like that as, as the host and people see him as being someone quite smart uh, they put him in documentaries and get him to write books and stuff mm-hmm. I mean he, he doesn't write the book he's just the name because people but see the he also the name. writes books too mm. he, he does yeah but I do like I have realised in the past mm-hmm. um, there was a book it, it was the Planet Word book actually because they did a book and then they did a TV series for uh-huh. it and the book was only kind of part written by him, but his name was everywhere. And then when you looked inside, it was like, you know, uh, Planet Word by Stephen Fry. And then right at the bottom, it's like, also by, I don't know, Bob <laughs> Smith. A- a- actually <laughs> written by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> actually written by Bob Smith. Bob Smith. Um, so, yeah, yeah, in this documentary, they were talking about uh, the use of swear words in English mm-hmm. and how it can help with pain management. Guess what my second clip is. Ah, okay. Uh, I won't yeah, say but, any more then. No, no, um, I think you should describe <laughs> it. Go for it. Then we can watch it so, also afterwards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so there were some studies done that, that showed that if you, while you're receiving pain or while you're experiencing pain, 
if you swear, you can handle it more. You can tolerate it for longer. So in this documentary, they um, and they have Brian Blessed, um, another famous national treasure in the UK. People Brian people Blessed. Know. Yeah, he has oh, a very interesting way of speaking, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, he put his hand in this ice cold water, which of course, you know, at first doesn't hurt, but then it starts to hurt, right? After a while. Mm-hmm. So he did it without swearing and he could only keep his hand in the water for a few seconds. And then he did it again, like kind of like thawed his uh, arm out and uh, tried again. Mm-hmm. But this time he was allowed to swear. Yeah. And so he was like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Such a and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, he managed to last a lot longer, showing that pain does help you deal with, um, showing that, not pain, <laughs> the other way around. Yeah. Showing that swearing helps you deal with pain. Yes. There was another element to that, which was really cool. Y- yeah, um, there was all of that. But also Stephen Fry and Bl- Brian Blessed both did this. And yeah, yeah, like both times when they were allowed to swear, they could last longer. But yeah. Stephen Fry lasted much longer than Brian Blessed while swearing. Why? Because, do you remember this? Stephen Is it from Fry- the documentary I'm thinking about? It's the same I guess. one, definitely the same one. Right. But there was just like this extra little thing that uh, Stephen Fry doesn't normally swear, right? He's not mm-hmm. a sweary guy. Whereas Brian Blessed swears all the fucking time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because he's Brian fucking blessed. And (laughs) that's just his style. So for what the study was like saying was that um, uh, because Brian Blessed swears all the time, it's not, it doesn't have the power that it Uh... it has for Stephen Fry because Stephen Fry doesn't normally swear. So yeah, it's about kind of being used to it. But yeah, that's exactly right. In both both cases, they lasted longer um, while swearing, but it's, Swearing is more of a superpower if you don't use it as much. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like it holds more more power. Yeah. Right, unless you use it. It's, That's true. It's like when you yeah, hear someone right? who doesn't swear swear and you're like <gasps> Yes. You know. More impact, like, right? Yeah, you're you're more shocked. Like I, I remember Oh, goodness, who was it? I think it was my grandma. My grandma <laughs> never used to swear. You know, she was of that generation where it was like, you should be a lady and ladies don't swear. Right. You know? yeah, it's quite um, right too. Yes. Yeah. And she <laughs> uh, she used to replace it with sugar. Mm. So, um, you know, in many languages, uh, they kind of change the swear words to something that sounds quite similar. So, oh, shit will be replaced with, oh, sugar, because it yeah. still has that shh. Sound. Yeah. They do it in Spanish as well with some oh, others, like cool. a okay. mierda becomes a miércoles sometimes. What does you know? miércoles no, mean? Wednesday. Oh, no way. <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> ah, Wednesday. Um, I've only heard a few people ever ever use that, but um, anyway, yeah, the, I remember my mom was telling me one time that she did hear her swear many years ago like when she was younger and she was so shocked mm-hmm. um and her husband so my mum's dad my granddad mm-hmm. that would have been easier to say my granddad and my, my granddad yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just wanted to clarify exactly who he was yeah. <laughs> um he yeah he he heard it and he was incredibly shocked and and wow. like disgusted it's like wow a woman should never speak that way do that you know what different. what caused her to swear why what made her swear? No idea. Oh, must have been I, I don't a remember. Big thing. Yeah. Wow. I'll I'll have to ask my mom. But I mean, it was it was when she was younger, so I yeah. I'll, I don't know. Maybe she she does remember because these sorts of little random shit things we do tend to remember in our lives, don't <laughs> right, we? Right, right, right. <laughs> like, and also, this is like a family story. Family stories tend to preserve fairly well when they when they yeah. when they've been selected. As a as yeah. a thing people say. Yeah. Anyway, it's just curious really what makes someone swear. Yeah, this is really true, isn't it? And it's like um you know like those old computer games when you're like you're driving a motorbike or whatever and you have like a power boost, right? But mm. you, you when you use the power boost, your boost dis- like goes down and you have to not use it for a while and it, it re like it it it, it goes up again. It refills, yeah. right? Yeah. And um so swearing's a bit like that, right? If you use it too much, you're just it's not going to be very strong but 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the nitro, isn't it? The I nitro, think that's what you said, <laughs> it, isn't it? Yeah, well remembered. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do I do play quite a few video games oh, and cool. car racing ones yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. There you uh, go. I my forte, yeah. Wow. Cool. Dark horse. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Cool. I want to move on to uh, talking about swearing and and, lang- and for language learners in particular. But let's let's have an let's have an Emma break because you know okay. we we talked a lot now. So now that the listeners will sort of like get to know you a bit more now. So now now I could tell us, Emma, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't know where to start with myself. Okay, I um, I, I could give you the I'll... the classic. Emma, Emma has a, a podcast called The Procrastination Podcast, uh, which is aimed at mostly at English learners, but has a general appeal. Also a YouTube channel. Um, not quite the same name, though, is it? It's no. Emma Procrastination, right? Uh, no, it's uh, Procrastination with Emma. With so, Emma, sorry. Uh, th- mm-hmm. There are two sides to me. Mm-hmm. Um, there is the pronunciation with Emma side of me, mm-hmm. which is what started everything. Like, it's the first thing I started with. And that's my more, like, professional, serious, teachery side. I mean, I'm not super serious when I teach because I'm not a super serious person. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people mistake that as me not being passionate about what I do and me not knowing what I'm talking about. But it's literally just my personality. It's not that deep, you know? <laughs> I think also a good a good teacher knows how to not be serious. I think that's important because... Yeah. B- serious, just serious teaching is very boring and won't yeah. help yeah. students. So I'm yeah, with yeah. you on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The weirder the example, the more likely the student is to <laughs> remember it, for sure. Yeah, I'm never going to forget Tithead. For example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the word of the day, the word of the podcast, Tithead. Yeah. I might call um, this one Tithead, just Tithead. Just, <laughs> Episode yeah. 39, Tithead. tithead. <laughs> with, with Emma, the Tithead. With, tithead with just, Emma. You, you should call just a couple of Titheads or something like that. <laughs> I really might, I really might. I don't really give a fuck, so I, I could just do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just f- fuck the algorithm. It- it'll be fine. Yeah, that's good. um, it'll get people curious and get, get at least in- at least looking and watching. <laughs> I'm sure they'll they'll be curious about it. Um, oh goodness, what I was talking about. Yes, so um, pronunciation. Yeah, but that's my kind of more uh, teachery mm-hmm. side. I focus mm-hmm. on teaching pronunciation there, as the name uh, very clearly says. Though mm-hmm. many people do ask me do you teach grammar? Do you have any grammar videos? Can you do some grammar videos? I'm like, no, because then I would be grammar with Emma, wouldn't I? <laughs> you know? Fair point. So, yeah, and I started that channel because many years ago, I I was living in Bristol and I was teaching privately and a lot of my students would have problems understanding me. So I would say things like, uh, where is the car? I don't know. And they'd be like, where is the car? And I would write it on the board, like, yeah, where is the where is the car? I'd write it down. Oh, where is the car? You know, or they would mm-hmm. say like in an American way, like, where is the car? And I thought, this isn't right. Like, I shouldn't have to change my accent, especially if these people are living in the UK and they mm-hmm. can't understand a word like car. Like, these are intermediate plus level students mm-hmm. who can't understand car without me saying it in a different way. Car. There's something wrong here. Yeah. 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 Like, car. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so, it's quite Scottish. Nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God. So I I kept telling them, like, you need to find some materials online and listen to British accents more, find yeah. some pronunciation videos. And bear in mind, this was almost 10 years ago. And, um, you know, there are there weren't as many YouTube teachers as there are now, for, for sure. Yeah, of course. Um, I feel like everyone and their mum has started a, a teaching yeah. YouTube channel. Especially like, since COVID as well. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. That's definitely uh, birthed some some new ones. But um, mm. yeah, I I started getting a bit annoyed at some of my students because they I, I felt like they weren't putting in effort when they said that they were looking for stuff. They were like, "Oh, I'm looking. I didn't find anything." Mm-hmm. Like, God, you know, you're not looking hard enough. You need to look for something. So I started looking. And there really weren't that many pronunciation channels at the time. Mm -hmm. There were a few, but they really weren't to, I don't want to say my standard. It's not my standard. They they weren't what I was looking for. They weren't what I was expecting. 
Um, they were very kind of generic, like, look at my mouth and repeat. Like, there were no mm-hmm. rules. That It was literally just a case of, here's a video, here's my mouth, copy what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, right. Right. Um, and then the other ones that were actually more what I was looking for, they were focused more on American English. And mm-hmm. I thought, well, that's not okay. good either. So, yeah, time went on a little bit. I ended up finishing my master's degree in, in English teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and it got to, yeah, I handed in my dissertation. It was like October or November, something like that. So, like two, a month or two after I finished my, my master's. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to start an Instagram page because I was too scared to start on YouTube. It was quite scary and intimidate, yeah, intimidating it is. with YouTube. Mm, and difficult to get going. Because it of just is. the setup and the video and getting used to being on video and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really is quite scary. And I am a kind of fake extrovert. So I'm actually quite introverted in mm. real life. Mm-hmm. I am i wouldn't say I'm the quietest person in real life. Like I can push myself and talk to people. And I, I am really like a fake extrovert because <laughs> I'm very happy just sitting in the house for weeks and not seeing anyone. And I'm mm-hmm. completely happy with that. Um, but yeah, I, I started my own channel helping people with their pronunciation, but it wasn't necessarily just to help people with their pronunciation. It was also to help people with their listening skills. So if I said something like car, they knew that I was talking about the vehicle, you know, like the yeah. drive and whatever. Um, and it wasn't just a, a word, like a cluster of sounds together. Mm-hmm. They knew what I was talking about. And then, yeah, I... I then did that for a while, and then I can't remember what happened, but I remember thinking one day, you know what, I really, really like playing video games. I've always been a gamer, mm-hmm. like I don't look like it, but really, I I play a lot. <laughs> um, cool. And yeah, and um, I thought it would be really cool if I could find some teachers who taught English with video games, and I could kind of get with them a little bit more, you know, and and kind of meet some more. Okay. So I had a look and I couldn't really find any. I literally found one other English teacher on Twitch who was from the US and was teaching English through Animal Crossing and other games like that. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. But I want to teach English through like Skyrim. I want to teach English (laughs) through like, you know. um, Ultra violence English. Yeah. yeah, like the other day I, I was doing a stream. So I, I, just to finish that, I, I ended up starting a, a mm-hmm. Twitch channel and then Procrastination with Emma was born. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll always, always, always uh, attribute the name to the original creator, the the inspiration, which was, um, oh my goodness, it's changed his channel name so many times. English with Rob, I think his channel so is now. Is this the guy who was yeah. was doing English through computer games? No. No, this is someone but, else. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. What happened was I, I posted on my Instagram stories, I want to start a Twitch channel uh, where I teach English through video games, but I don't want to call myself pronunciation with Emma because I'm not teaching pronunciation. It needs mm-hmm. to be something else. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, messaged back and he said, Emma, if you don't call yourself procrastination with Emma, you've missed out on yeah, something really okay. big here. And I was like, ah, okay. So whenever I mentioned the story of the name and how procrastination with Emma came about, um, I always, I always thank him. And um, shout yeah, out to I Rob. Started, shout out to Rob. Yeah, I don't know English really with Rob. I'll check him out after this. Yeah, get him on the cool. pod. Maybe yeah. I will. Maybe I will. Yeah. 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 Cool. But yeah, he he suggested that. I was like, you know what? No name is going to top that. Because a lot of people were like, oh, what about gaming with Emma? It's like, gaming with Emma. God, that's really, you know, a bit plain, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I I ended up creating this, like, kind of second account. And then I started the podcast because I would spend sometimes more time on my live streams, my gaming live streams, talking and telling stories and people would stay for the stories. And then as soon as I started playing a game, like half of them would leave. So they were like, I just want to hear your stories and the shit that happened during the week. Like, tell us the shit in your life that goes on. So I was like, hmm, okay, I'll start a podcast. Um, so I do that. I'm not very regular with the podcast, but for me, it's just another way of teaching in this very informal way. Yeah. The way I describe it is like, we're two friends in a pub. Yeah. Um, 
And that that's and the most well. It's the most difficult thing is to find like authentic language like that, right? Like, um, yeah. you know, just friendly, down to earth, unscripted, and um, yeah, sort of. Or, I guess I just want to say authentic. You know, like um, shit, yeah, unpretentious, <laughs> <laughs> shit, and amateur. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, amateur and shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> although that's my niche. Keep keep out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want I want Stephanie on each other for sure. <laughs> Yeah, amateur yeah. and shit. Amateur and shit. Yeah, so um, that could be the name of this episode too. Um, <laughs> think about shit, it. Yes. Amateur and shit. Um, great. Yeah. So that's it. So people really like um, it. Resonated with people. This this sort of just basic conversational tone and just talking about you know your your everyday shit. Literally just mm-hmm. everyday shit. Yeah. And, and I mean, people do give me topics and I can literally talk for like a good two hours by myself. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know where it all comes from. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, I know just the managed feeling. To, yeah, just pull something out my ass that, that episode and it's fine. You know? good, <laughs> it's a good, good expression swearing, as well. Good swearing, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, and that's it. That's where you're at at the moment, right? Mostly with the yeah. Procrastination Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a uh, pronunciation with Emma. There's a YouTube channel for that, and um, and then I've got procrastination with Emma, which is on Twitch and mm-hmm. uh, my podcast. So that focuses on teaching like very informal English. It's where I mm-hmm. swear because I think swearing is an important part. If you look in the textbooks, there's no mention of swearing, no. but then you go to England and you realize people are calling each other wankers, and you're like, and what's a wanker? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, or uh, I don't know, like people tend to not understand how to use swear words properly. Like yeah. I mentioned before, students saying, oh, this is a shit. I'm like, no, no, it's shit. Mm. And I guess <laughs> yeah, you have to correct them. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Also, just on that no. note, like uh, people not knowing the, the strength of certain swear words, like yeah. the, the, the cunt Wednesday thing. Um, no, I'm mixing yeah, two yeah. things up. Yeah. But the. the... Yeah, yeah. But I knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah. 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 Con- yeah. Con- yeah. Con- yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's valuable. There's not enough swearing out there. On, There's not. We English need to bring learners. it back. Yeah, yeah. Bring the swearing back. Bring it back. <laughs> this is such a good manifesto. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, nice one. Cool. So, um, yeah, one more time. Uh, where can we find you online? Give us all the places we can find you online. So you mentioned the... Yep, so yep. if... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know you're going to mention something else. No, no, go <laughs> so for it. British, aren't we? Plug, plug um, your pluggables. Go for it. <laughs> so, my uh, my pronunciation with Emma's stuff. If you're interested in improving your English pronunciation and um, uh, listening skills, then pronunciation with Emma. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, literally any social media. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, Twitter as well, though I'm not very active on Twitter and um, and Facebook, I'll be honest, and um, and TikTok as well because you know all the cool kids are on TikTok. Mm-hmm. But TikTok. if you're interested, <laughs> if you're interested <laughs> more in uh, just something more casual, maybe you're wanting like a you've been searching for a podcast that's a lot more natural. You want to you know sit have a pint and you know imagine we're in a pub together chatting away about shit then uh you can look for the procrastination podcast Uh, it's on all podcasting platforms and if you're interested in video games and you want to learn english through video games or just come and chill with me while i uh, kill people on skyrim (laughs) and talk (laughs) about some grammar (laughs) then uh as well i should also mention that sometimes during my streams i speak spanish um, I have like a little kind of uh, points reward system. So like the longer you watch the stream, the more you interact, the more points you get and you can redeem those points. And I can do things in the stream uh, depending on the kind of thing you choose. So sometimes I stream a bit in Spanish as well. So if anyone wants cool. to hear me speak Spanish, then... That's so Twitch, like isn't that. it? That whole like interactive points based, get the person to do it. something. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I, I really, yeah. really love it. And then if I fail my... You know, my my chat give me a punishment. Like in my last <laughs> no stream, yeah, in my last stream, I I had a word ban, uh, so I wasn't allowed to say the word I, and I failed it within forty. Actually, That's I failed hard. it within five seconds because I was like, really okay, I'll hard. say. I was like, oh fuck, I failed it straight mm. away. The first thing I came about, mm-hmm. failed it forty seconds later. I was like, right, okay, you get to choose my 
my punishment and i was a bit scared um because they're, they're brutal on twitch but yeah they, they made me only say the words uwu for about a minute or so or like five minutes i can't remember but i could only say uwu for like a duration of time and that was my punishment that's, that's quite harsh <laughs> It is, it is. But, could have but been it's worse, funny. though. Could have been it, worse. It yeah. could. It could. <laughs> uh, my Oof. Twitch audience is quite brutal. They were very nice. kind to me with the uwu punishment. Yeah, yeah, still quite <laughs> savage. But okay, great. So yeah, Twitch, you, all the socials. Yes. And it's, uh, yeah, Procrastination with Emma, the Procrastination Podcast or Pronunciation with Emma. Yeah. Anywhere, any combination of those things. Yeah, and, it, and if you can't yeah. find them, if you just go to Pronunciation with Emma, like I link everything. On, yeah, on there. Cool. So you'll find cool. everything. That's the hub. Cool. Um, uh, lovely. And I want to talk about one more thing before we before we finish, because it's okay. let's bring this round to like English learners, right? And you know, people learning English, swearing, English learners. Um, do 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 they need to know? Is swearing important for English learners? Do they need to know about swearing? Do they need to learn swearing? Um, a lot of people say that swearing is vulgar and um primitive and and unnecessary <laughs> i know we both probably both of us disagree with that concept but you know some people do think that so like should we be teaching learners about swearing should learners be learning how to swear like what was what do you think about that is it important i think it depends on the context mm -hmm. so if a student for example is only wanting to learn english for business meetings then no they don't need to learn these things mm -hmm. if they're wanting to learn english to maybe play video games online and chat to people on discord and stuff like that then yeah they're probably going to want to know some swear words because mm -hmm. they're they're going to encounter them people are going to use them they're going to be oh you fucking asshole what are you doing and, 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 and. Uh, and, and they'll be like, whoa, what, what are they saying to me? <laughs> um, so it it's very useful to know swear words. Mm. Um, you don't necessarily have to use them, but just being aware of them is really important because That's if anyone ever uses them, then you understand them. And as well to the people who say, well, they're vulgar. I don't, I don't want to know them. I always say to these people, well, if you're offended by a cluster of sounds, like a specific cluster of sounds, then the problem is you. Like mm -hmm. if you think about it, mm -hmm. it's literally a cluster of sounds. Um, so when people get really highly offended, if they listen to my podcast for the first time, they're like, oh my God, Emma said the word fuck. I'm like, get over it. Mm -hmm. It's a cluster of sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so that that's always my Ooh. my take on it. I don't know what you think about yeah, it. Yeah, there's a like very deconstructionist argument. I like it. That's interesting. Um I mean there there are like I could think of like 20 sort of response well, no, four <laughs> responses and different different alleys that we could go down on that. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess the main the main point there is that like it depends, right? Because language is it, it kind of creates is it helps create reality it helps um it not only describes reality but it also molds reality as well right because yeah. language is an action uh using language as an action creates creates a sort of reality and and dictates helps dictate how things move forward in reality so i think i can't simply agree with the fact that it's just a cluster of sounds um <laughs> but you know having said that it really doesn't matter if someone's just saying fuck because it, I, I think I, I, I'm with you on, on the sentiments of it because it's none of their fucking business. If, you, if they don't like it, they could just like switch off, right? Yeah. Um, I guess it matters when it's being used in a, in a more interactive and in, in a more sort of um, dynamic way. If you, if you tell someone to fuck off and they haven't done anything wrong, for example, yeah, you know, that, that is, it becomes more than a, cu a cluster of sounds at that point because you're no i'm talking about like just swear words yeah. being Isolated. offensive yeah 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 that's what yeah. i mean but no no like if i'm walking down the street i mean this used to happen quite a lot when i lived in bristol actually mm. I, I don't I know, know what's bristol, wrong yeah my, bristol, my brother but... lives in bristol i know it quite well yeah, a lot so... of swearing in bristol it's a very sweary and place <laughs> it is yeah, yeah yeah it's um it it's yeah it's an interesting place it's bristol i, I liked bristol a I lot bristol. i really did it's a great place mm -hmm. um but yeah like i i remember one time i i was walking back home and i just finished a lecture i was doing my master's at the time and i i walked past this guy i think he was you know drunk and he was just like sitting in this like shop doorway 
and um stapleton and just, road it was a stapleton road it was <laughs> park street okay okay <laughs> so park street is becoming the new stapleton road now it's, is it? it's really yeah yeah <laughs> um but stapleton road my god that used to bring back memories of my childhood town that's for sure like my brother down lived there. on stapleton road for a while yeah this me is brave that yeah place, that place anyway so i say this place, the yeah. drunk dude yeah yeah so mm -hmm. i mean bear in mind it's also in the middle of the day and mm -hmm. i'm just walking past just minding my own business and it's it's a busy street and for some reason he singles me out and he just goes oh fuck you you fucking bitch mm -hmm. and i thought you know what i'm not gonna let that one fucking slide i'm gonna turn turn around and say something so to let something slide means to just let it go yeah. like i'm i'm not did, gonna react but did you no. say tit head uh, no, <laughs> I just turned around and I just said, you fucking what? He's nice, like, oh, no, nice. nothing, no, no, nothing, nothing. I was like, no, no, you call me a fucking bitch. What did I do? No, I didn't say anything. And it, it was trying to say like, oh, I didn't say anything. You're imagining it. And then oh. all of a sudden this guy comes along and, uh, and stops and he's like kind of watching what's going on. Bear in mind, there's like people passing all the time and I'm like fighting with this guy. Um, and I just wanted to know like, why did you call me a fucking bitch? That, that's all I wanted the answer for. Mm -hmm. the, all I wanted the answer to, that's it. And then in the end, it just ended up with me saying, oh, you fucking dickhead and just walked away. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this guy, you know, he kind of said like, are you all right? What happened? um and i was like i don't know i was just walking and he called me a, a fucking bitch just i literally just walked past him i guess so, he, yeah. yeah i was just gonna say in that context it's really offensive because i've done nothing absolutely. wrong absolutely yeah. yeah yeah that's yeah, crazy say, isn't sorry. it no no it's just really interesting i guess i guess you know i'm just trying to rationalize what's good what the hell's going on here i guess he just needed to lash out and thought that you yeah. weren't going to respond i suppose and obviously Probably. you did yeah yeah yes. he wasn't expecting a yorkshire girl who grew up in one of the roughest right. towns in the north to turn around and say you fucking what <laughs> that phrase yeah. as well you fucking what that's yeah. i like that one that's a good one that could be a good podcast title there are so many to choose from <laughs> you fucking what? what that's like that's great that. that's assertive you're standing your ground you're using swearing in like like the perfect way of just like it's it's yeah. there as a mark of like i'm not going to take this shit yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah, really yeah. good really good so nice yeah. powerful phrase if you're going to take any phrase away from this lesson today it's you fucking what you fucking oh you fucking what, what mate <laughs> yeah you fucking what mate oh yeah. nice yeah 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 cool so <laughs> yes uh swearing yeah it's it's useful that's a really good example and i was thinking about um going back to english learners really quickly because um you know it's the argument can be made that like you know they don't know what they're doing because you know they could be using the wrong words in the wrong situations and stuff because as we talked about different cultures different contexts different swear words right yeah um but again i think it's quite you know i think it's quite important like some people um, I'm going to give a really crude example because it's just easier. Um, uh, but if if you're from somewhere like, I don't know, Eastern Europe or Russia, like a sort of Slavic country, there's a lot of swearing and um, it's kind of playful and quite, um, uh, yeah, quite, quite a sort of, it's a bonding experience sometimes, it's poetic right. even. And if you're, if you're like, you know, if you're, if you're from one of these countries and you want to, um, you know, like just, mark your identity a little bit and have this sort of uncompromising sort of uh, personality or project yourself as an uncompromising person you may want to use swearing to do that because it, mm. it is kind of you're taking part of your culture with you even though you're translating into english this sort of uh linguistic side of your culture but you're still doing something you're still wearing your your culture on your sleeve to use a terrible mix of metaphors <laughs> um but i think yeah i think sometimes swearing can be really useful for english learners because they may want to do that and use it to help mark their identity that's a a very good point yeah mm. swearing and identity i wonder if anyone's written a paper on that like someone's done a phd oh, on swearing and identity um yeah for sure i do find mm -hmm. that some languages are more sweary than yeah. others yeah um so you know when they come to english and they're swearing quite a bit it 
like if they swear a lot in in that language and then they start speaking English, it can sometimes be too much. Yeah. But yeah, I guess that's just them trying to bring Ex their identity, isn't mm -hmm. it? Like indeed, indeed, yeah. So I think it, it's important. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't rob someone of that. You can't remove their ability to do that. And I think as a teacher, yeah. you, you you're kind of if they want that, if that's what they their goals are, like it's part of their goals. You need to give them the tools to do that. Yep. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, that, that's that's really true. It's a, a really good point, actually. I I hadn't really thought of it from that perspective as like of like a cult in like a cultural way. Right. You know what I mean? But N neither had yeah. I until yesterday. I was debating a, this topic with with my partner, and she right. was saying, she was uh, taking the the opposite position. So I I found that that argument through through that, and it's like yeah, no, that's oh, that's okay. actually quite a good point. So yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we before we close up? No, but you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really like quite towards the end of, of, of the podcast now. And mm -hmm. um, by now, I can imagine the YouTube comments. Um, I look forward I was, to them. Yes, <laughs> I always do. I always do. I was thinking about it, and and this comment that I'm going to make. Um, is going to show whether people listen to the end of the podcast or not, or whether they they commented very angrily or not. Okay, but I'm scared I now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I I realized uh, it's not even about the swearing. It's when I was like right at the beginning, first talking about Brazil, and um, and I was just thinking before, you know, when you have the sudden moment of realization, like oh shit, I got that the wrong way round. And I realized, yeah, I was talking about it as winter, but no, it was winter in the UK in February, but it was summer in Brazil. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was thinking, yeah, why was it actually so hot if it was meant to be winter? But no, it was their bloody summer. That's why it was so it's hot. Good to, it's good to hear yeah. that it doesn't get really hot in, in winter in Brazil then, because can no, you imagine no. the summer? Yeah, my my goodness, mm. yeah, I would die. But yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I made that mistake all the time because I, I I'm moving to Australia soon, and I've been there a few mm. times, and I keep think I keep not understanding that February is summer. How can February be hot? Right? It's just un unfathomable. It yeah. I mean, my yeah. boyfriend's from Uruguay originally, which oh, is why cool. we went to Uruguay. A lot of people kind of say, oh, "Why'd you go to Uruguay?" <laughs> it's because he's got family there still, and. Good um <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect reason. So we did like a kind of mini trip. Like we went mm -hmm. to uh, Brazil and then Uruguay and then Argentina. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing trip in their summer as well. So oh, we were dying, you know, it wasn't the best mm -hmm. time to go, but mm -hmm. still a, a, amazing. And um, oh, I believe I forgot why, why, uh, why I mentioned it now. What, what were we you wanted about? You wanted to trigger some comments, I think. <laughs> No, no, no. The 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 triggering was um, the fact that I got confused with the winter and the summer. Yeah. Okay. That was that was the trigger. But yeah, why did I mention? And then, uh, mentioned Australia. Ah, I mentioned... And... That was it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I remember. I remember. I remember. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my boyfriend told me uh, because he moved to Spain when he was like twelve or thirteen, and mm -hmm. he said, "For me." Because uh, I asked him, what were some of the, the weirdest things you found when you first moved to Spain? Because I thought maybe it won't be too different. Like there'll be some cultural differences, but it's, you know, maybe it's not too different. Um, it's not like us moving to Japan, for example. Right. Okay. And he, uh, you know, it's not so different in terms of culture. Um, and he said, oh, no, one of the weirdest things for me was celebrating Christmas um, while it's cold. So yeah, I guess for mm. you, with the other way, Christmas right. will be yeah, on yeah. the beach. <laughs> yeah, and like in Australia, they have salad for Christmas lunch because no one wants to eat like a roast in the summer. I, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, I, I, I'm never going to get used to that. Like, that's just <laughs> going to be so strange. You'll, you'll yeah. be the only weirdo that has turkey in like 40 degree heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just refuse wearing like jeans and boots. And yeah, yeah, no way. Um, stubborn, stubborn pom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, it was been a pleasure. It's been fucking fun talking about fucking swearing and shit that like that. That's been really fucking good. Thanks for fucking inviting me. <laughs> That's what a been fucking blast. Fucking pleasure. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, have a great, have a great everything else. <laughs>